Hey guys, Kim here. Thank you so much for checking out my video and I hope you are having a wonderful day. Today I wanted to do a uh, another pour with my six chambered split cup and I've used it a couple times and I think it's really awesome. So this is the cup here. Um, like I said, it has six chambers in it. Um, I did print this one for myself and if you're interested in getting one of these, I know they sell similar ones on Etsy or even Amazon. So let me show you the colors we're working with. Um, this is Burnt Sienna by Montmart. This one is a metallic rose gold by um, Deco Art, And I think it's one of the dazzling metallics. This one is orange by Montmart. Brilliant red, also by Montmart. I have Dioxazine Purple by Liquitex Basics. And my last color is teal by uh, Golden Fluid Acrylics. And so this is the consistency of all of my paints for this pour. Um, anytime I do a tree ring pour, you want it to be not super thin, not super thick. Um, just leave a little bit of a mound because you do want it to be able to flow over each other, but not uh, get stuck. So this is um, a base actually that I'm using. This is just the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic black and I have it pretty thinned down. It's actually quite a bit thinner than my other paints just because I want it to be um, something that the other paints can slide over because I'm going to spin this one out and I'll show you guys. This is one I did um, a few months ago and it's actually one of my absolute favorite paintings that I've done. Uh, same split cup I used. Um, this is a 20 by 20 and I did basically what I'm going to do in this video. If you're interested in how I made that one, I'll go ahead and link that video um, above. But we're gonna try this one on a rectangular canvas. This is a 16 by 20, so it's not gonna be exactly the same, but I'm gonna basically do the same thing. I'm gonna put my base down. I'm going to um, fill my split cup, tree ring pour into the middle, and then spin it out. So like I said, um, in terms of tree ring pours in general, I like to put a base coat down just because it makes it easier to slide and you're not going to get the canvas sticking or the canvas, excuse me, you're not going to get the paint sticking to the canvas and you're going to lose all of your um, actual rings. And uh, so when you spin it out, this really just helps it slide very easily. The only um, issue I have at least is that I end up flinging paint everywhere. So if you have an apron or anything else to help cover your clothes or your pouring area, you might want to put that down because you are going to get paint everywhere. So I'm just going to torch this, pull out all of the chunks. That's also a very important thing if you're going to do a pour like this where you um, spin it, or even if you're going to tilt it, um, something like a tree ring pour where you don't want um, your design to get messed up. It's really important to get all these little chunks and hairs and imperfections out of the paint, um, either your base coat or your colors, because the chunk is just going to get stuck there and you're going to have this ugly little line where it pulls through the rest of your paint and just kind of ruins it. So I'm going to go ahead and fill my um, split cup with the colors and uh, we'll get to pouring. All right, so we have all of our paint in the cup. So now I'm just going to slide my cake spinner underneath my canvas. And uh, 
A lot of people ask how you keep the canvas on the spinner so it doesn't go flying. And in my experience, at least, as long as you're not like pretending you're on Wheel of Fortune and spinning like crazy, it should stay on there. Um, as you probably saw, I have just a piece of painter's tape that I fold over and I put in the center just to give it a little bit of um, hold in the center, but it should be okay and it shouldn't go flying off, like I said, um, if you don't go super crazy. So I'm just going to do a test spin real quick because I made the mistake before where I didn't make sure I have enough clearance and I've knocked over half of my other paints with my canvas, so we're good. We're gonna start the tree ring pour in the center here. And I don't know why, but I feel like the key to a good tree ring pour is to just hold your breath. This is what I honestly end up doing is holding my breath half the time and then I just am about ready to pass out onto the canvas. So what we're doing is just going slowly and I'm pouring clockwise and then I'm spinning the canvas counterclockwise. So they're going in opposite directions. And this is exactly what I did with that other painting that I showed you guys. And you can see all these beautiful lines just starting to show up. And it looks, um, it looks pretty cool as is, but when you spin it and you kind of tilt it out a little bit, that's when you get all of the colors and all those pretty lines showing up. So I'm just gonna keep going here. Um, a lot of the key to this one is to try and keep it centered as much as you can. It's kind of hard to do. You can see I'm starting to, to wiggle out a little bit here just because I, my back started going out on me. I'm like hunkered down over a little coffee table here. That's my pouring station. Um, but try and keep it in the center as much as you can and it'll keep your your swirl really nicely. I did a better job on the, um, the 20 by 20 I showed you. You can see here it's starting to get a little bit um, overlapping the previous ring. But just try and stay centered, go slow, and it should turn out pretty cool. So I'll go ahead and speed the rest of this up and we're gonna spin it and see how it looks. Okay, so here is the finished painting. You can see that the center there did get a little messy just because 
like I said, I'm hunched over a tiny coffee table in like my 100 degree garage. So I kind of lost my focus there at the end. But even so, you can see all these really cool rings and patterns that show up when you um, tree ring pour with a split cup and then kind of spin it out. I do prefer to spin them rather than tilt them because it keeps the overall shape. You did see me at the end there kind of tilt this up a little bit and you can see that purple um, kind of got teased out a little bit. I don't really like that the orange and the teal kind of took over everything here. So I usually shy away from orange and I will probably continue to do that after this. But let me know what you guys think. Please leave me a comment, a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. And thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys next time.